I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Right. So here he actually infers that it's the Ashkenazi is the synagogue of Satan. There's a problem with that, right? Because again, we are sticklers when it comes to reading the, the scriptures within its actual context, right? This this is a, a series of visions that, that Jesus gives to the apostle John, the island of Patmos to give to the churches at that time. What the churches at that time would have known of the Ashkenazi Jews? No, <laughs> they, they did not exist at this time, right? But there's another thing too, as well, which is, uh, what well, here's a quote from him. He says, the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Somebody's perpetrating a fraud. Somebody's going around saying they are Jews and are not. Tonight, we're going to let the word of God be the final authority on who, in fact, is a true Jew and who is the synagogue of Satan. So he wants to prove that the Ashkenazi Jews are the synagogue of Satan that Revelation is talking about. And you, you, you can't do that. Right. But another thing he does. Right. So now he's claiming fraud. Right. Deceit, trickery, uh, the act of deceiving or misrepresenting. Being an imposter, cheat. Right. So what he does in the debate is that he adds another burden of proof on his side. So it's no longer just them not being legit uh, Israelites. But also they're doing it by design, that they're, they're purposely being deceitful, that they already know that they are not the legit children of Israel, but are trying to convince others that they are. That's another burden of proof that he, he, he put upon himself for the debate. Right. So it's not just whether or not they're legitimate. Now, it's I also know the intent of why you're not legitimate, which I found interesting. But um. To get to more context, right, because the, the, the scripture is referencing the church in, in, in Smyrna and says here, Polycarp, the Jews of Smyrna were still prosecuted, persecutors of Christians and were conspicuous in demanding and planning the martyrdom of Polycarp and the Bishop of Smyrna, the same city in which the revelator calls persecuting Jews the assembly of Satan. Right. So there were Jews who were not Christians who are attacking Christians who at this time were also Jews, right? In the second century, in an inscription describing the classes of population in Smyrna, we find the expression, I can't read Greek, it's hard, patai, iodai, vocab, I know you know a little Greek, so, um, which Momsen thinks means Jews who had abandoned their religion but which Ramsey says probably means those who formerly wore the nation of the Jews, but have lost the legal standing of a separate people. And the reason why I'm giving you this, like this is the, what this term is being used at that time. And this is the same um, Korean Greek word that's being used in Revelation. I think it's hoi pate iudia. I think it's how you'd say it. I know hoi, like uh, you guys ever heard hoi poloi? Means right. like the the great the great masses or the group right. of people, and you see Iudii, but I don't know if I'm pronouncing that one right. But that's you see that's like oh, you yeah, you see right. the equivalent of like oh, Judah, right. Judah and uh, right. Judaisms and all that. Right, and then also, in um, the meaning and function of Iodios in Greco-Roman inscriptions it says, what then are we to conclude about the meaning of Iodios? And inscriptions. I myself can see no reason for not assuming that one and two apart, it is the same as in other types of contemporary source material, i.e., it refers mostly to people who have been born as Jews, whether in Judea, Palestine, or elsewhere, and in few cases, these who had converted outright to Judaism. Hebreos, the word which largely superseded Iodios in Byzantine times, the latter having acquired pejorative overtones largely confirms this. It never denotes mere sympathizers, nor is 
is it somebody's personal name? It simply refers to Jews, whoever found and whatever their geographical origin, right? This is how the, the word is being used here at that time. Um, both the meaning and the function of the epithet seems to me to be remarkably clear. Used with pride by both those born as Jews and those converted to Judaism, it might, depending on place and time, serve either to stress similarities or to emphasize differences. And we see in Revelation that it's emphasizing difference. So it wasn't that they were necessarily not actually Jews, but they weren't, you know, believers. You know, and, and we all and we know that Paul does re, uh, remark that not everybody who is Israel is of Israel. But even if you don't believe this, if you disagree with me here, there is no Ashkenazi Jew in the time of the, the writing of this particular vision. So either way, he's off. Yeah, because even on their timeline, they're mostly going to have this um, switcheroo happen later on. So if you're like going to do the Khazars, you know, you're out of the ancient era at that point. You're actually in the Middle Ages once you go to the Khazarian thesis, you know, because you're no longer in what's considered the ancient world anymore. And obviously not in Second Temple Judaism because it's going to be post-destruction of the of the temple and all that stuff. Sometimes I hear these guys say, well, there were some fake Jews running around then. And and it's like, well, tell me their provenance. Where do they come from? You know, how does that work? And other ones, like I saw someone in the chat, they'll, they'll try to be like, well, this is prophetic. So it's saying what's going to happen. But if you read the context, it's clearly talking about people persecuting them right then. It's localized and contextualized to those two churches in Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9. We don't get to take those specific contextual uh, charges that, hey, these folks deny Jesus as Messiah and they persecute the people of God. And then put that on anyone who in any way is ethnically Jewish or say, oh, therefore the synagogue of Satan, because that's not what the New Testament does. And, you know, this phrase, when is it used? It's used in those specific contexts there in Revelation 2, 9, 3, 9. And so, you know, it's it's sort of like a, but it's it's like almost like too attractive. There's no way they're going to drop that and be like, oh, actually, look into the context. This is clear. It's referring to these two groups in this in these specific locales regarding these specific instances, it's too attractive for them to all to, to have like this anti-Semitic weaponry from scripture itself is the right, way it right. appears, you know, to be able to say, Oh, therefore, Oh, you know, uh, uh, that type of thing. But it's like, well, what is it? I think qualifications for the synagogue of Satan. It's like, how do you work with him in that way? Well, we can tie it up with John eight, what Jesus says. And of course we have the same, a uh, human author involved there, John. But even just looking at it, it's like, okay, what is it? Deny Yeshua as Mashiach. And I think consequently, and in addition, you're actively fulfilling Satan's purposes by persecuting, attacking the, the, the people of God, the church, right? Those two things, I think we help us see, okay, sin or Satan. I mean, and honestly, that could there's certain instances where that behavior, that activity could qualify to a certain amount of Hebrew Israelites. And it doesn't really have to do necessarily with the ethnic claim directly, but it's like some of the Hebrew Israelites themselves would meet those qualifications, I think. Anyways. <laughs> no, no, that's good. That's good.